Good morning everybody. Today we have a very special day for the School of Agriculture that we are launching certificate in sericulture in the country for the first time. This is the second certificate course which we are launching. Sericulture occupies second position in the world and is the largest consumer. India is the largest consumer in, in the world. But the productivity is very low in the country. And the reason for low productivity is that rate of adoption of new technologies is very low. Therefore, with this intention, Central Silk Board and School of Agriculture, Indira Gandhi National Open University, thought of launching this certificate in sericulture. This uh, uh, is, uh, we got the technical support of the Central Silk Board and on a 50% cost sharing basis, we had uh, developed this course. We are very happy and welcome our Honorable uh, Union Minister of State, Shri E. V. K. S. Elengovan, who has very kindly agreed to launch this program today in the EMP studio, which is being launched, uh, which is being uh, uh, seen through telecast in DD2 and EduSat. And we are very happy and uh, proud that our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor V. N. Rajshekharan Pillay, who is a force behind all these new initiatives, is going to preside this launching session. We have with us Dr. Lata Pillay, our Pro Vice Chancellor. We have Shirimati B. V. Oma Devi, Director Silk, from the Sil Central Silk Ward. We have with us Shirimati M. Satyavati, Member Secretary, Central Silk Board from Bangalore. And we have uh, other officials from the Central Silk Board. We welcome them very, uh, uh, we also welcome the directors of various schools, uh, registrar administration, and members of the faculty who had come on this launching ceremony. <coughs> This uh, certificate in sericulture, which I mentioned, uh, is the joint venture of uh, uh, our um, School of Agriculture and Sel Central Silk Board. We got a technical support from the Central Silk Board, and the cost sharing is on 50-50 basis. The ob uh, objectives uh, of uh, uh, this uh, certificate course is we have to strengthen the human resource in the field of sericulture through the intervention of ODL. We have to prepare rural, rural youth farmers and uh, for accepting sericulture as a profit make, making enterprise. As I mentioned that there is a low productivity uh, of silk in the country. That's why <coughs> this uh, course has been launched. And then to create awareness about the opportunities in the uh, uh, sericulture area. The program structure is that we have four units. We have already got them printed in English. First is the introduction to sericulture. Then we have host plant cultivation, silkworm rearing, crop protection. These are the areas where we have developed these courses uh, uh, in, in collaboration with our partners. The uh, features for this program is that 10th uh, pass who has completed 10 years of education uh, will be eligible to enroll in this program. And we have 10th uh, uh, plus who are having two years experience in the uh, sericulture area. We are also opening the opportunity for them because this we have discussed with Central Silk Board because they are uh, saying that there are people who are non-10th grade, but they will be able to take up this, uh, those uh, are interested in sericulture employment opportunities. The program fee which we have calculated is uh, 2500 and the duration of this program will be six months. And a, a, a learner can complete in a period of two years 
by enrolling in this uh, course. As I mentioned, the medium of instruction for this is English, but we will be soon translating into other regional languages in collaboration with Central Silk Board. Our target group uh, uh, are rural youth, as I mentioned earlier, skilled and semi-skilled workers, and the personnel who are working in government and NGOs in the field of sericulture will be our target group. Farmers, entrepreneurs which are involved in mulberry cultivation and silkworm reading will also be our tar target groups. And the employment opportunities uh, are that uh, uh, they, after completing the certificate course, can become the uh, sericulture professionals because they will have enough knowledge to interact with people down the line with the farmers who are interested in this profession. And they can go as field and lab assistants also after this uh, program. And they can also be the supervisors in private greenage. And uh, they can be uh, uh, farm supervisors in corporate sericulture farms. And they can, they can be supervisor in the rearing units. And they can also be self-entrepreneurs. Our focus these days on the self-employment opportunity of our rural youth, rural farmers, and women who, are, who wants to take up the, this uh, particular prof profession. With this brief, uh, I will now um, uh, call upon uh, Shrimati B.V. Oma Devi, IAS Director Silk, to give her remarks. Honorable uh, Minister of State for Textile, Sri Langavanji, uh, Sri Pillai, Vice Chancellor of uh, Indira Gandhi Open University, Mrs. Pillai, Pro Vice Chancellor of Indira Gandhi Open University, Mrs. Satyavati, Member Secretary, Central Silk Board, Professor Hansra Ignau, and Professor Saluja Ignau. Uh, at the outset, I would like to congratulate uh, the Central Silk Board and IGNAU for taking this initiative, especially a uh, very important initiative at uh, the stage, as uh, Professor Hansra has already mentioned, at this stage where India being the largest, second largest producer of silk in the world. Though we are second largest producer of silk in the world, <coughs> we are lagging behind the world production, uh, behind China, in many aspects, especially the quality of production, technology upgradation, the quantity of production, and most importantly, the training. I have been uh, dealing with the silk for last one year in the Ministry of Textiles. And I realized, though I am from a, a science background, sericulture is a very complicated and a specialized science, uh, encompassing starting with the plant sciences, the animal sciences, especially in the pre-cocoon sector, and uh, engineering, economics, especially in the post-cocoon sector. And I also felt that I should be trained in uh, sericulture in order to understand the nitty-gritty of uh, the sericulture. I am aware that uh, there are many institutions in the country, especially the universities which are offering uh, courses at the graduation and the post-graduation level in sericulture. Apart from Central Silk Port, which is conducting a large number of uh, short-term need-based training in sericulture. But this will be a unique course, which a uh, short duration of uh, six months, especially in uh, distant uh, learning mode. And uh, it will definitely attract more number of individuals into this uh, industry of sericulture. This is, uh, again, very important initiative in the sense that when uh, recently we have amended a Central Silk Board Act, which is specifically 
focusing on the quality aspects and also on uh, the private sector participation in sericulture. So in order to understand the quality aspects, this uh, particular training would be very, very important. And uh, as of now, the Central Silk Board is concentrating on training of individuals who are already in the sericulture, whereas this would attract more number of individuals from outside, and uh, which is open for everybody. And definitely it will improve the job opportunities in sericulture. With these few words, I would again thank the Central Silk Board and Indira Gandhi Open University for taking this initiative and wish them all the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for your encouraging remarks. May I now request uh, the member secretary, Central Silk Board, Shrimati M. Satyavati, to give her remarks. Respected Honorable Minister of State for Textiles, Sri Langovan, Professor Raj Shagiran Pillai, Vice Chancellor of IGNO, Dr. Lata Pillai, Pro Vice Chancellor IGNO, other dignitaries on the dais, ladies and gentlemen. As, as it has been mentioned, India is the second largest producer of silk after China in the country, in the world. But China produces 80 percent of the entire world's production, whereas India is lagging far behind with only 14 percent of the total output in the world. Specifically for India, the requirement of raw silk is about 26,000 metric tons, whereas our production during the year 2006-07 was about 18,475 metric tons. So it's clear that we have a shortfall of about 7,500 metric tons. This shortfall is mainly for good international grade raw silk, <coughs> technically which is termed as 2A grade and above. This good quality silk, we are not able to produce in sufficient quantity, basically because our sericulture farmers are not up to date with the technologies and the good rearing practices which are being advocated by the research institutes. The sericulture industry in India employs about 60 lakh persons, out of which 54 percent are women, who will not be in a position to go to regular academic courses or perhaps many of them may not come out of the houses for various reasons. In order to take care of this gap, it was decided by the Central Silk Board, the organization which takes care of sericulture department uh, development in the entire country, to collaborate with Indira Gandhi Open University and launch this distance education program so that people in the nook and corner of the country can get enrolled into these courses and get good education in this emerging area of sericulture. The course which has been launched, will be launched by the Honorable Minister today, is of six month duration. And uh, the research institutes of CSB will be providing the material for the course. Central Silk Board has three premier research institutes for mulberry sector. One is in Mysore, which takes care of the southern states. The other one is in Berhampur, West Bengal, which takes care of the eastern states. We have one more in Jammu and Kashmir, Pampur, which takes care of the northern states. We also have research institute for 
the other varieties of silk, namely Tassar and Eri and Muga. All these research institutes are as of now also catering to the requirements of the industry by providing courses and training. But as I mentioned earlier, they are not adequate to take care of the requirements of 60 lakh persons in the industry. In fact, by the end of 11th plan, we intend to engage almost 77 lakh people in this industry. So I hope the people in the sericulture industry will be able to utilize this very good opportunity being provided by IGNU and CSB, make maximum utilization of it, benefit out of it, and improve the sericulture industry in the country. I wish and hope that in a short span of time, India will be able to become a superpower in the sericulture sector. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I must mention that this program is being telecast live with our and our regional directors in, in the country are watching this along with the potential learners. So I welcome them also for, uh, for joining us for this. And after the uh, concluding remarks of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, we will have five minutes for interaction with the regional directors in different parts of the country. May I now request Dr. Lata Pillay, Pro Vice Chancellor, to give her remarks. Honorable Union Minister of State from Ministry of Textiles, Sri Elangowan. Srimati Umadevi, Srimati Satyavati, Vice Chancellor Ignu, Professor Hansra, and the faculty of Ignu who are present here this morning. The launch of this certificate program in sericulture is yet another important milestone in the School of Agriculture's programs. The school is designing a number of programs having regional and national importance and at present it runs about four vocational programs, entrepreneurial and two awareness programs during the past three years. The launch of the sericulture program is important because of the interface that it has with the Central Silk Board, the governmental organization and the perceived need for skill development of people working in the sericulture sector. Through the large number of programs that the School of Agriculture proposes to launch for awareness as well as for competency building, the mode of transaction of these programs has gained importance, particularly the student-centered learning approach that it is adopting. A large number of interactive counseling sessions, multimodal methods are some of the strengths of the programs offered by the School of Agriculture. While these programs aim at bridging the gap in the sericulture sector. We would also like to identify the best practices that are available in countries around for increasing the yield in sericulture, for disseminating better technology practices, and over a period of time, upgrade our programs to the needs of the people in the sericulture area. The School of Agriculture has all, the School of Agriculture aims to infuse knowledge and skills in the field of sericulture to the interested, particularly those employed in the professional enterprise and cannot afford for a full-time course. Just as, it was mentioned recent, just as it was mentioned by Madam Satyavati, we have a large number of women in this sector and we hope that the certificate program will reach out to all of them. Just as we have done in our other programs, this certificate in sericulture will also be translated into vernacular languages depending on the demand from the states so that it reaches out to the larger population. I'd like to congratulate Professor Hansra and his colleagues in taking up this initiative and we hope that over a period of time, maybe after, the, after its launch, say after a year or two, study the impact of these various certificate programs and see where we could review it and to what extent it has fulfilled its mandate. So once again, congratulations to the School of Agriculture for the launch of this program. Thank you very much, Madam. Before I request our Honorable Minister, I uh, must put on record uh, the effort taken by 
Dr. B. Sarschandra, who is the Director of Technical of Central Silk Board, and our own colleague, uh, Dr. P. Vijay Kumar. Though these two pe young people were working very hard for, for this particular course. So I will request Honorable Minister to release the study material and I will also request our Vice Chancellor to release the brochures. Vijay. Thank you, sir. This actually is, sir, one set of the study material which we are going to give it to the learner. Now, may I request now um, Honorable Union Minister of State, Ministry of Textile, to give his remarks. Professor V. N. Raj Pillai, Vice Chancellor Indira Gandhi National Open University, Sri Madhi Devi, Director, Minister of, Ministry of Textiles, Sri Madhi Satyavadi, Member Secretary, Central Silk Board, Dr. Lada Pillai, Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor B. S. Hansara, Professor M. K. Saluja, friends. It's a matter of happiness to me to be here on the occasion of launching of the certificate course in sericulture by Indra Gandhi National Open University in association with Settle Silk Board. Ministry of Textiles, Government of India. India has a unique distinction of producing all the fine varieties of silk of commerce, mulberry, tazar, iri, and moga. Today, India is the second largest producer of raw silk in the world and also has the distinction of being the world's largest consumer of pure world silk. Sericulture industry in India has grown many folds since independence. From about 900 metric tons of silk production in 1950, now it has reached the level of about 18,475 metric tons. We consume around 26,000 metric tons of silk. As mentioned by the member secretary of Silk Board, the additional requirement of about 7 to 8,000 metric tons of raw silk is imported and it's mainly from China. In a country like India where 70% 70, 70 of population is rural that depend on land-based activities for their livelihood, sericulture is a viable instrument of poverty alleviation, which has the potential of generation of huge rural employment opportunities. Like most of the agriculture activities, sericulture is eco-friendly and does not cause any significant pollution. Sericulture industry provides employment to more than 6 million people across 54,000 villages in India who operate 2,58,000 hand looms and 29,340 power looms producing over 5 million square meters of silk fabric per annum. India has been producing finest silk since the time immemorial. India's silks are known for their finity, finity, finery, artistic designs and distinct colors. The country is known the world over the exigent brocade fabrics of Banaras, silks of Karnataka, 
टाइ एंड डाई एंड पटलो ऑफ गुजरात एंड राजस्थान इकाज फ्रॉम ओरिसा फाइन मंडे जी एंड टेम्पल सारी सिल्क्स ऑफ कांचीपुरम एंड तांजूर एक्सेट्रा दीज आर ओनली ए फ्यू ऑफ द माइन रेंज ऑफ सिल्क वीवर्स टेक्सचर्स एंड पैटर्न अवेलेबल इन इंडिया From the time Central Silk Board was constituted in 1948, it has been contributing immensely for the overall development of silk industry in the country, in close collaboration with all the states. It has established research and training institutions in different parts of the country to find solution to the problems pertaining to silk culture. These institutions develop new host plant varieties. silk form breeds technologies for increasing the production per unit area they have also been contributing in training the technical personnel who can effectively transfer the outcome of research as well as technology to the end user it's a matter of great satisfaction that the settle silk board is now venturing into distance education in collaboration with indira gandhi national open university the leading institution in the field of open distance education this venture is aimed at taking the sericulture knowledge to the rural masses and persons interested in sericulture there are number of vocational programs run by various agencies in the country for improving the income levels of poor masses i am sure sericulture was is one of the best our occasion to choose from its best practices can be translated in the uses appropriately the strength of sericulture lies in its simple technology which attracts billions of rural folks it has capacity to attract the flow of money from urban areas to rural farmers the people in the industry should come forward to make use of this program for updating their knowledge which will enhance enhance their income the state sericulture departments central silk board and other organizations involved in sericulture should strive to create suitable job opportunities for person who qualify in this courses <coughs> i congratulate all those who have put in their expertise and experience in developing this course and hope that the target group will make use of this course thank you very much thank you sir uh, before i request our honorable vice chancellor to give his presidential remarks i want to mention here for the kind information of all the audience that during last year we or we launched two courses and only on sunday one of our, our colleagues went to one of the program study centers and i am very happy to uh, inform that out of the 49 students who enrolled in our dairy diploma course 35 have already been absorbed even the result was not out so we can see the importance of these courses for the rural people so i was very uh, happy to uh, see that uh, this kind of uh, percentage of people getting employment will be a a boost for our programs in the country now i will request our honorable vice chancellor professor pille to give his presidential remarks mr langovan honorable union minister of state of, for textiles mrs satyavati member secretary silk board mrs uma devi director silk board Professor B S Kanisra, Director School of Agriculture; Dr. Lata Pillai, Provost Chancellor of Indira Gandhi National Open University; Professor Saluja, School of Agriculture; and distinguished uh, audience from the Silk Board as well as Indira Gandhi National Open University, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me thank the Central Silk Board for collaborating with Indira Gandhi National Open University for launching this certificate program. in sericulture we are really glad that the school of agriculture is collaborating with large number of governmental organizations 
to provide uh, the necessary human resources required for these areas. With the background that there are about 70, 80 lakhs uh, personnel are going to be involved in the silk industry at various levels. This particular uh, program <coughs> for providing skills and knowledge to the people who are working in this area is very important. And only through technology intensive, technology augmented uh, training programs, we may be able to achieve the skills of training. And this particular program, which covers various aspects of silk production and also the technology is involved in silk production, would be a model program for many other uh, courses in this area. I am glad that uh, the Central Silk Board has large number of institutions, uh, research level institutions uh, working in research and development in the area of silk production, silk technology and a number of other related areas. The School of Agriculture can also interact with these research level institutions for high lev higher levels of uh, knowledge building and uh, training. The very fact that all these uh, prospective learners are working in large number of silk firms distributed across the villages in the country necessitates uh, starting uh, special study centers of Indira Gandhi National Uni Open University in these areas. We cannot limit our activities just to the academic institutions which are providing these centers. We have to see that even silk uh, firms or uh, lands where silk is cultivated, we have to create special study centers for this activity. Then only we, we will be able to uh, reach uh, the requirements. And uh, I'm, uh, we are launching this course from July 2008 onwards. Uh, and I don't think there is any restriction in the number uh, of seats for this particular course. There is no restriction. And uh, the minimum requirement is 10th standard and uh, we will also be providing the courses in the regional uh, vernacular languages uh, maybe from next session onwards depending upon the uh, requirements. We should also try to make use of the people who are trained who have the expertise in this area even though they do not have any certificate or, deg or master's degree or any anything of the sort. There will be large number of people uh, connected with the silk board without any formal qualification, but they, they have the necessary knowledge and skills in this area. We should be able to identify them as the trainers for this activity. And in return, we should also identify the School of Agriculture and the Central Silk Board together should also identify a mechanism of certifying that knowledge and skills already available with the workers in the field. And maybe we can add some, some more additional knowledge and skills uh, in entrepreneurship to them and they should be uh, provided with some sort of a certification and that will enhance the uh, confidence of these workers who are in the field and ultimately uh, they will be able to uh, come into the higher education sector, in the, into the higher education field itself by uh, providing uh, such opportunities. And in this connection, uh, the, uh, the Ministry of Labor, as well as the Indira Gandhi National Open University, has a new program of certification of prior learning in individuals. Uh, if you just look at maybe several uh, lakhs of people may be employed, we can, uh, we can easily identify 10 to 20 percent of them with uh, sufficient knowledge and skills. They may not have any B.Sc. degree or uh, B.Com. degree or anything of the sort, but sufficient knowledge and skills how they can be given additional knowledge and skills and how their expertise can be made use of for imparting training to this large number of certific, uh, prospective uh, workers as well as uh, low trained uh, or low skilled workers that is that is the that is the agenda, that should be the agenda before indira gandhi national open university we are confident that uh, with the involvement of 
the large number of institutions in the Central Silk, uh, Silk Board as well as uh, the various organizations, not only the governmental organizations. I understand that there are large number of non-governmental organizations are also working in the area of uh, silk production, uh, mass culture and a number of related areas. We should also in involve them. So this activity, this joint activity of the Central Silk Board and Indira Gandhi National Open University would definitely uh, help to uh, systematically achieve uh, the human resource requirements in the next five years in the, in the area of silk production, silk technology and the, uh, silk, ma silk manufacture and also the uh, marketing of silk at various areas. I understand that this particular area, we, uh, I mean, as a scientist I know that this, uh, the, the reason why the silk production or silk is not happening in a very big way in India is because of the, uh, it is a very sensitive area. For example, the pest management, the diseases connected with silk uh, production, all these things are uh, very uh, scientific, uh, scientifically rich areas where expertise is needed and the farmers and the workers who are working in this field has to be uh, provided with uh, up-to-date knowledge as, as well as up-to-date training in this area and uh, there is the need of involvement of uh, the higher level scientists and at the same time they should be able to communicate, this higher level scientists should be able to communicate with the farmers, in a, farmers and workers in a very effective way and therefore these courses which we have developed uh, they cater to these requirements. And Indira Gandhi National Open University has, uh, this, uh, has the capability, technological capability to reach uh, millions of uh, homes in the country. For example, uh, now through DTH, EduSat and uh, all these uh, technological capabilities, these programs which we launched today, this, cre this reached 9 million homes, not 9 million earners, 9 million homes. So this technological capability as well as the uh, capability of using uh, multimedia technology for training has to be uh, very effectively utilized and uh, we are confident that with the uh, collaboration with the Central Silk Board we should be able to achieve these targets. Uh, one, I once again uh, thank the, the Central Silk Board, the Honorable Minister for uh, Textiles, Mr. Sri Govan and all the officials of the Silk Board and my colleagues in the School of Agriculture for uh, completing this uh, preliminary activities. We already completed the entire course, course material and we got uh, the uh, complete uh, scientific support from the Central Silk Board. But we completed the work in a, in, um, in a record time and uh, we are launching this course in July 2008 but even now we will be probably advertising it in a, in, in a, in a week's time and we will see to it that um, the program is uh, propagated in a very effective way through the media, uh, through the newspapers and the various media so that large number of, uh, large number of uh, learners can participate in this. Uh, of course, 10th standard is the minimum requirement that may be the, uh, the uh, decision of the various ac academic bodies. But we should also think whether uh, the 10th standard pass should be a, a minimum requirement for such a course. We can even think of prob probably 8th standard and with sufficient, maybe no understanding uh, English or understanding the regional language in, in a proper way. That can be the minimum thing. And then we can even think of... Uh, giving them a 10th standard certification for achieving, for, for uh, enrolling in this particular course. That, that is also a possibility we have to think about because large number of people, they, may not, they might not have passed the 10th standard. We should think of even going down to 8th standard and then giving them the skills, uh, the, giving them the preliminary uh, knowledge and skills which are expected from the 10th standard. Let us supplement them with this, that, that particular knowledge and skills and then uh, try to enroll maximum people who are working in this area. Let us, let us also conduct a survey. What is the type of, what is the type of, uh, the weather, um, how, ma any, how many of them or how much percentage of these workers are uh, in the, in the uh, who are passed in the standard or in the standard and then that let us evolve a minimum eligibility criterion based on the requirement of the workers. This is a suggestion to the uh, uh, school and I am confident that there will be uh, uh, periodic changes in the whole uh, 
de uh, delivery program uh, from the School of Agriculture. Once again, congratulations to the school and the Silk Board. Thank, thank you, sir, very much for uh, your encouraging remarks. And you had given lots of uh, food for us to think about. And we will try our best to come to your expectations. Because whenever we interact with you, you give us a lot of ideas. And in this particular remarks also, you had given us uh, lots of things which we have to do for this sericulture program. Thank you very much once again. Now we'll have uh, uh, the... Hello? Okay. Hello. Please. You can take this in. Yeah. yeah. Namaskar. 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 I'm Dr. Sadiza from Bangalore. Greetings from Bangalore Regional Center to all of you. I have with Professor uh, Padinaj of the Silk Board. He would like to express his views on this, on this great occasion. Thank you, sir. Congratulations to all, sir. Hello. Congratulations to all, sir. Thank you. Thank and you. I thank each and everybody for making this dream a grand success. And the uh, course <laughs> that was due for such a long time is being launched now. And I thank all my seniors, my directors, my secretary, everybody who has guided us in making this endeavor a great success. Thank you also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For the information of people, if uh, any other details about IGNU, some, will be, some, uh, some of you will be interested to have, we have a uh, updated website, www.ignu.ac.in. You can get the information on this and also in our regional centers which are located in almost all strategic points, strategic cities in the different states. These uh, uh, this program will be launched through. Pro we are expecting calls from different people, so I wanted to, for the information of Honorable Minister, uh, I would like to say that we establish program study centers for the launching of this particular or other courses under ODL system. Guwahati, yes, please. Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, good morning to everyone who is involved in this prestigious uh, task of launching the certificate in the uh, sericulture uh, program. I am happy to say that in Assam, uh, in the city of Guwahati, uh, just a fortnight ago, the School of Agriculture along with the Muga Silkworm Seed Production Unit in Assam, uh, carried out a four-day training program. Hello? Yes, yes, we are hearing. Hello? We are hearing, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, carried on a four-day training program for farmers in sericulture. Uh, different people from, uh, farmers from different parts of Assam were uh, assembled and they underwent the training. Uh, the, they also had a field visit to the regional uh, Muga research station at Boko. Uh, it was a wonderful experience with 11 technical sessions along with the practical field work. And uh, most of the participants, though they were illiterate, uh, they expressed a lot of satisfaction about the scientific uh, techniques that were imparted to them during the training program. Uh, it is expected that uh, we would open up a program center at the Center for Integrated Sericulture Research at Jorhat. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> As I sir men uh, was mentioning that we are uh, implementing our programs through different program study centers. And we have already written to all of your uh, Central Silk Board uh, uh, centers located in different parts of the country and uh, as our RD from Guwahati was mentioning uh, one is stationed uh, one station is in Assam so we are already in touch with them and we got uh, uh,
quite a large number of responses from people that they will be able to help us in, uh, in uh, establishing program study centers. Uh, for that, uh, I'm uh, very grateful to Central Silk Ford for helping. And we are also contacting different NGOs, as our Vice Chancellor has mentioned, who are in the business of uh, uh, the silk uh, uh, rearing and uh, other pr uh, activities of uh, silk. So um, hopefully by July we'll have sufficient infrastructure available in the country so that we could uh, uh, easily take off for the launching of this particular program. And uh, uh, people are very receptive for this particular program. I'm sure uh, the outcome will also be uh, very um, uh, nice. Any audience would like to have any question uh, before we... Uh, Professor Hansra, yes, sir. I would appreciate if you can just give a, an advertisement in the, all the local newspapers through our RDs, okay. inviting, inviting, I mean, uh, creation of special centers or something, what is program centers. Okay, sir. Not only in uh, research, research level institutions, probably there will be large number of people working in a, in a, in a particular firm or something like yes, that. Sir. Yes. And we should be able to identify uh, such area, such 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 institutions or such centers as also as our special study centers. We should not just limit it to uh, res research level institutions or our own technical training institution. We should identify the advantage of open and distance learning is that we should be able to provide this training in the places where they work. Yes. That is that is the thing. So we we give an advertisement through our publicity across the country uh, about the features of this course and then find out uh, whether there are institutions beyond our our thinking uh, whether, uh, whether where such training can be provided and include them also let us try with it uh, with thank you sir uh, this, this is a, uh, i think we had been trying sir earlier but uh, you had given us this direction i'm sure this will facilitate not only for sericulture but other programs okay, also yes, because we are what we are lacking is the uh, awareness among rural people about various programs. So I think with this uh, uh, your uh, guidance we will be able to reach uh, the large number of people who are not reached so far. So we will be requesting our colleagues in the regional centers uh, to give uh, their um, uh, advertisements. Sir, I, uh, bef we are expecting a call from there. I um, uh, just want to inform that uh, uh, for our uh, value added products diploma which we started one of our colleague wrote an article in Hindi uh, about the program and uh, all will be surprised we got 1000 calls in three days about the program and how it is implemented so I think uh, whatever our honorable vice chancellor suggested this is the publicity which will make a great impact in the implementation of our programs. Any question from the audience, please? Yeah. Hyderabad, please. Yes? Uh, we congratulate for this uh, highly job oriented uh, program, the Satrian Silk uh, uh, Sericulture. Just here, I would like to give one example of our uh, diploma in dairy technology student how our agricultural program is helping the rural youth. We had one student who studied his diploma in dairy technology through IGNO. He was an ordinary bicycle vendor of milk in a rural village. And uh, he studied our program. He says that he could know how to feed the cattle, when to milching, and how to preserve them. In this way, he says that now he could establish a shop for himself in his village. And he is helping his fellow villagers how to feed the uh, buffaloes and uh, all these techniques. And he could uh, establish uh, a 10 uh, collection centers in the neighboring villages. And uh, I feel that uh, this is the true example of how our courses are helping the true rural youth in uh, uh, standing on their own feet. Wow and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sab. So uh, may I uh, now request uh, Professor M. K. Saluja to give a formal vote of thanks, please. Mm. Sir, I, on behalf of the university, the School of Agriculture, and on my personal behalf, 
extend our heartfelt gratitude to Honorable Minister of State for Textiles, Sri E. V. K. S. Ilongovan, for spending his valuable time and to grace the launching of the certificate program in sericulture. Sir, this will add new vistas to training and HRD strategies for the educational sector, for the sericulture sector. We assure you of our sincere efforts in achieving the objectives of the program. Sir, your presence and blessings will be source of inspiration to us. We are also thankful to our respected Vice Chancellor, Professor V. N. Dashrik Pillay, for his constant support, encouragement, and assistance on completion of the assignments on time. He has been instrumental in bringing new academic dimensions in form of innovative schemes to the open and distance learning system. Sir, the School of Agriculture has one of the objectives to develop qualification framework where the integration of the prior learning could be incorporated. So we will be looking for all the sectors uh, for sericulture, for fruit and vegetable and dairy, development of qualification framework where certification of prior learning could be taken into account. Sir, we thank you for your presence. We are also grateful to Shirimati B.V. Uma Devi, Director Silk. Her presence from the Ministry shows the interest of Ministry in the human resource and qualitative growth of the sector, particularly in the competitive and globalized environment. We thank you, Madam, and assure you of your commitment to the assignment. We are also thankful to our Pro Vice Chancellor in charge, Professor Lata Pillay, for continuous guidance, encouragement, and support. We thank you, Madam. Shrimati M. Satyavati, Member Secretary, Central Silk Board, has taken a special interest in timely launch of this program since her taking over the charge recently. We sincerely express our gratitude to her for her presence. We look for your guidance and support in its successful implementation. The Central Silk Board has been Correctly supporting us in our knowledge dissemination, particularly the sericulture sector. The former member secretaries, Shri P. G. Oman, Shri H. Baskar, and the director technical, Shri B. Satrachandra, and his, and his team members, has given us a lot of academic and administrative support to operationalize this collaborative project. We are thankful to all the CSB staff members and faculty members of the CSP who had given, who had worked behind the scene. So this is one of the very good example of. 50-50 collaboration in all the in academic, financial, and in all the aspects of things. We have finished this program in time because of their good help and support. Sir, I would like to mention this is one of the program which the School of Agriculture rather started, where the involvement of regional center was taken from very conceptually was there, which is being supported, advocated by you. We are thankful to our current regional director, Dr. B. S. Sutendra and the earlier regional director, Dr. B. R. Narsumarao, for their support. We are also thankful to the director, EMPC, who had kindly agreed to extend all the facilities despite the later entry for scheduling this center, uh, this program. We are grateful to our director, Professor B. S. Sansara. He is always available and content consistently monitors with his memos in the morning and evenings to see that the programs are launched on the time. He personally monitors the progress and encourages the younger generation to take the freedom and responsibility. We thank you, sir, for your efforts and support. The school is also grateful to the expert committee members, unit writers, faculty, editors, consultants, and the other staff members who have spared the valuable time in developing the program and the study material. Thanks are also due to the Program Coordinator Dr. P. Vijay Kumar for ensuring completion of the program in time. He has worked very hard with the Mr. Fani Raj at the Central Silk Board. My sincere congratulations to them. We are thankful to the additional guests, directors of the school, registrar, other faculty members and staff members who are present here and the regional centers. My sincere thanks to all faculty, staff and consultant of the Central Silk Board, school and EMPC for extending their support to this function. I sum up the thanks to all the staff members of the university and the Central Silk Board who have directly or indirectly have contributed for this program and function. Thanks to all and have a good day, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Saluja. I uh, must thank Professor H.S. God, who is a Joint Director, Education and Dean 
of Indian Agriculture Research Institute who had uh, taken his time to come here at the lunching time. And we have uh, uh, the uh, Regional Director RC2 has written to us that uh, can sericulture be done in any part of the country or else it is concentrated in selected pockets of the country. This is the uh, question which uh, Regional Director RC Delhi has uh, uh, Post. As of now, 24 states in the country are practicing sericulture. It's almost 90% uh, of the country is covered. Okay. Uh, I hope, uh, Dr. Pandey, your uh, question has been answered by our uh, Member Secretary, Silk, Central Silk Board, that it is being practiced, uh, practiced in uh, almost all these states. Uh, any, uh, we, we have two, two more minutes. Uh, any any question you would like to, Professor Aslam? Uh, not a question, but uh, on the 25th, uh, many of the regional directors will be here with the Confederation of Rural Industries for a meeting in IGNO, and then it might be a good platform for the School of Agriculture to, with the rural NGOs, to tell them about our programs and uh, propagate, um, even identify centers. In fact, they are looking for this kind of input. That we'll do. We are in touch with them, madam. On 25th, yes, it's in Delhi. Okay, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Dr. Jashri Krup, she is uh, uh, taking care of the northeastern states. Uh, Dr. Krup, what is the contribution uh, of the northeastern states to the silk industry? I understand it is not insignificant. So I guess uh, this program, program will be of great relevance to that region. And uh, I'm happy to inform you that we've already established a study center in the state of Manipur. It is in one of the research institutions in Manipur, and we hope to open more study centers. But uh, uh, could you tell me about uh, the contribution of the northeastern states to this particular? In fact, uh, you, you may be aware that uh, Muga is a variety of silk which is grown only in India and that is grown only in Assam and Meghalaya. So besides Muga, Northeast also contributes uh, uh, for uh, Tassar and Eri. So now the contribution as you have mentioned very correctly by Northeast is significant and the Ministry is also emphasizing a lot on the development of sericulture in Northeast. In fact if I can add for the current year out of 81 crores uh, meant for the catalytic development program for sericulture, 37 crores is to be spent or to be utilized by the northeastern states. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, as mentioned by Vardhani, that we have already conducted one training program in SM for the benefit of the farmers and extension functionaries based on the material which we have developed. So, uh, thank you very much.